God says. Let's go to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Verses 10 to 12. Where Paul tells us, he says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So all those people you're asking, you know, what makes them righteous? And they're trying to give you the list. They're not righteous. They may have done one or two good things, or even eight or ten. But they're not righteous, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. We're basically in the dark as to what God wants when we're not connected to God. How can we possibly otherwise be there and the person that stands on his own and says I'm going to show how good I am is trying to say I'm going to show how good I am apart from God he's doing what Cain did I'll bring my own sacrifice I'll do my own thing I'll show you God I can do better than what you think is good let's go to James chapter 3 verses 19 and 20 that's after Hebrews chapter 3, verses 19 and 21. And the Lord tells us through John, or John's quoting the Lord, and he says, and this is the condemnation, that light came into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So, we can fool others. We can even fool ourselves. But the light of Jesus Christ exposes all things. It's all, it's all exposed. It's all there. And what the light exposes are that if our deeds are manifest, deeds that are righteous, it's because they're wrought in God. God is the head that sent us to do that deed, not that we were doing it on our own. Amen. Even though we would deny to man that we are selfish creatures with our own interests at heart, we might deny that to man, we would fall trembling to the ground in front of God who knows every action and thought we ever had because there is perfect holiness and perfect righteousness and we know He sees everything in us and we would just fall face down on the ground. So we can stand up to each other and we can look and say, well, I know I behave better than that person. So I'm a little more righteous than that person. And we can hold ourselves together that way. But true holiness would send us straight down to the ground. We'd know that He is the light and we're the darkness because if we're unreconciled to Him. All the cover is removed and every bit of selfishness is exposed. And the hardest thing to understand is that many people that do good works all the time, like a person that came in here recently and, and attended and, and confessed, that she was doing it out of her own selfishness. She was doing good works, good religious works, to prove how righteous she was. And that's not what God wants. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want sacrifice. He wants you to accept the mercy that He offers. And that's uh, that part about all our cover being removed and every bit of us being exposed is what Isaiah meant back in Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. 
that was the concision out there, Karen, trying to break in on our little meeting. So, barking. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 6. I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 5. I did stay up late last night, didn't I? For a good reason. <laughs> That's right, a righteous reason. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. And Isaiah says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So when he sees Jesus Christ, he just knows how short he comes. We're undone when we're not part of the body. If we're not part of him, we're just nothing. So that brings us to ask in any situation that you're in, who are you representing? Because if you're part of the body, you're part of the body. The body is Christ. Yes. So, who's getting the praise? When you talk to people and all, who, who, do, who do they praise? You or Jesus Christ? Or if they praise you because they see you do something good, do you immediately say, don't praise me? The only reason you think you see that in me is because the Lord is working in me. And if you saw something shine out of me that impressed you, let me lead you to Him because He's the one, you know. Who are people noticing? Uh, at this conference we went to yesterday, there was a man that stood up to talk to us, and his name is Kevin Sadler. And he's the son of the man that kind of leads the Berean Bible Society right now. And he's very emotional. And the first time I heard him, he just said wonderful things and all, but I kind of, my cynical self, held back a little. And I thought, well, is he mustering up those emotions? Is that for show? Or is that real? But it is real. And by the second time I heard him, I mean, he's a man of great passion who loves the Lord great. and is so excited about mm -hmm. his salvation. And then he's here. He can't hide it. Right? No, it just comes out. And so then it's like, wow, man, that's, that's great. You know, that, that's a wonderful thing to see. Infectious. It is infectious. You know, I even a little few feelings actually came out of them. <laughs> yeah, that's not true. We were all crying. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But you, re but you remember the prodigal son. You know, he went out on his own. He left the body, you might say, and went out on his own. He came crawling back, not knowing if he would be accepted. Yes. He didn't know. He said, at least if my father will make me his servant, I'll still be better off than what I am. He didn't know. We know that we will be accepted. Because God showed us all how ready He is to accept us by allowing His Son to die on the cross for us ahead of time. So, that way, if we can understand that, is that He's already done that to bring us back into the body. He's done His part in reconciliation. He's done what had to be done, which was to pay the price for our sinfulness. Not for our, the sin we committed yesterday or the one we're going to commit tomorrow, although that's part of it, but the sinfulness that's inside of us. It's just, he's, it's just totally covered up by the blood of Christ. So he's already done it. If we would be reconciled, we're the ones that have to say, yes, Lord, yes, you know. He has offered the gift of reconciliation. All we have to do is accept it. Then we are holy and unblameable. And even though you may step out of here and you may say, I've got some plans this week and I'm going to try and make them holier and less blamable. Whether you fall or whether you stand, you're holy and you're unblameable in Christ, in God's eyes. And that's a promise. Oh, that's a for sure thing. That, yes. You roll up your sleeve first. No, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> 